He just came out, saw me here, and now he's going back in. Yep, he could go over to Walgreens. Yeah. He already left. Now he's on the phone trying to call somebody. It's called to let him know I'm still here. He ain't going nowhere. He does this. He'll, he'll follow me in somewhere, get on the phone, get off the phone. This is what they do. This is how I know what that they're they're working for someone. The guy Eric that I recorded said he was from Buffalo. I, he were, it was when I first went to a new place after they sliced up my tent. He was bragging, oh yeah, we're sitting here just chilling. <laughs> bragging about what a good job he was doing, getting close to me and befriending me. And then the other lady did it too, the lady with the thick Austrian accent. She was always doing that. And then when I published on Facebook that they did it, then they would leave my presence to get on the phone. So, yeah, they work for somebody, which is good. I want them to leave a nice, long paper trail in the form of, you know, because all your call logs are kept, even if they, just let's say he destroys his phone. They can still look up the account and the number and the carrier, whoever, whoever is his carrier, whether it's AT&T or Sprint or whoever, can look at see who called him from what time at what time. You see what I'm saying? So I've been roping open these motherfuckers. They think I'm the, I'm the mouse and they're the cat. It's the other way around. And that's their ignorance that makes them so vulnerable to my tactics. And that's how, that's all intelligence training. That's how all CIA people who go undercover, they blend in. It's called Going Native, Special Forces. In fact, one Special Forces guy wrote a book about it. You go native, you do their thing, you get interested, and you, like if one of your marks is a, a, a form of a terrorist group, which we all know is now false propaganda. But for the sake of my point, let's say some member of a terrorist group likes to make art or listen to a certain type of music or collects teapots or some shit like that. The specialist, the, the special forces person, will start studying that stuff. And they'll go somewhere where that person goes and be next to them and get on the phone or have a conversation with somebody about, oh, yeah, I have a teapot from Budapest and I have a teapot so that, that their mark or target can hear them to strike up a conversation to start getting friendly. That's called penetrating a terrorist cell. Well, these are white supremacists. This is all Jim Crow, Joe Biden, Dixie Crat, and Republicans. I've penetrated this cell, helped my father, and I penetrated this cell. And you got to do what they do. Doesn't mean your intent is the same as theirs. And we're Native American. We can't be racist anyway. That's not to say we can't discriminate, but... Uh, Tell Anita Hill she wasn't discriminated against by Clarence Thomas. I've definitely been discriminated against by gays, you know, LGBT, black, white, native. Every, anybody can discriminate an autistic cancer person or whatever. Oh, he's coming out again. Oh, goody. So, anyway, they think they're smart and I'm stupid and I'm letting them live in that fantasy land. Well, now I'm starting to to blow when when I when I go against their fantasy like I'm doing now, my fucker's all nervous. He don't know what to do. He's pacing back and forth. He's like, shit, she's supposed to be going somewhere. No, she's sitting there out in the freezing fucking cold watching me. See, now he's all frustrated going back in again. So you guys, these motherfuckers are not professionals. You have to remember, my father was a sniper. What do snipers do? They lay under camouflage in one spot and don't move, peep through a high-powered telescope, and they may be like that for days, up in a bell tower or under some bushes. 
or they have to sit like I was is ex, like like I was explaining about having to uh, lure your mark so that you're not aggressive to set off their red flags. You may if you know that your mark likes to go to a certain coffee shop, uh, frequent a certain coffee shop. You may have to go there and sit there all fucking day every day on the off chance that they finally come. You see what I'm saying? I'm trained to do what you motherfuckers think you're doing, and you're not. You're fucking idiots. And you're too fucking stupid and drunk on toxic masculinity and arrogance and narcissism. You don't fucking get it. You can't see the forest for the trees. I'm making a laughing stock of you stupid motherfuckers. Look at what has happened to Cuomo at this point. No, I didn't do it by myself. There's a whole team of people out there can't wait to deliver justice to you sick fucks. Because you're not just doing it to me, you're doing it to so many people. That's why you're trying to silence me and hold me hostage and pit me against my parents and vice versa. When you thought I yanked my father's alibi and gave validity to Darla Munoz's accusations and Piper's accusations and all that false pelvic floor shit in my medical records, here recently y'all got arrogant and stupid as fuck. Again. That tells me you're lying to my parents. You're lying to them and threatening them too, some kind of way. Maybe you're telling him, oh, she's under investigation for this, 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 and this. And, and I remember uh, Chris Wilkinson telling me, uh, don't discuss this interview with anybody unless you face criminal sanctions. They, can, they probably lied to my parents telling them I'm doing this, 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 and this. And I'm saying that they molested me and all this shit. And then telling them they can't say nothing unless they be charged with obstruction. And then lying and saying that I don't have cancer, that I'm just malingering for narcotics. I'm committing fraud on my insurance to pay for the narcotics. Who knows what bullshit is. And that's very much what my mother indicated they were doing. Because when I, she was sitting there looking at me, popping, you don't write for nitroglycerin unless somebody's having heart attacks. She could see I was sick as fuck. She knew they were lying to me. She was shaking her head going, no, no, no. She knew they were lying to her. But the power is, most powerful people in the country were involved, so there was nothing she could do. Well, now, I went to the right place, and Cuomo has fucked with so many people, and all his people has fucked up so bad, and I found an honest group of people. I knew I was in the right place when I recorded the doctors telling me to take my investigation out of... He's still in there lurking. That's why I'm filming. He'll come out again. Um, that's why I stayed there. I knew there were there was people there that would help us. Are my parents perfect? No, far from it. But you don't get to exploit that. And they'll they may not be able to change at their age, but they'll come up here. We're not. This is AA. They're alcoholics and addicts. Maybe they're not actively drinking right now or drugging, but they've that's their problem. They're still in. They they never got help. For their addictive behavior. So I'm doing a 12-step intervention with them is what I'm doing. When I'm calling them out, it's me doing a 12-step intervention saying your behavior's gotten so bad you've put the whole fucking family at risk and it's time to reevaluate your priorities. And addiction basically revolves around the seven deadly sins. You can't get enough of anything. Lust, greed, gluttony, sloth, you want something for nothing. That's all addiction is. You're, you're in the flesh, you're wrapped up in the seven deadly sins. That's all that means. So if they try to say, oh, well, she threatened us. She said, oh, oh she'd charge us if we didn't help her. Uh, that's, that's basically an intervention. That's me saying you either start doing the right thing and acting like you got some sense or you're going to face the consequences for sure. They've always managed to get out of the consequences. No, 
They're not going to avoid the consequences if they continue down the same damn path. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So I'm going to stop this. I don't want to use up all the memory on my phone. I'll start filming when he comes out again.